Welcome back to Anana Returns, Chapter 14, Terror. What does a girl do when she has lost everything? After a time of crying myself to sleep in my mother's arms, I began to feel foolish. Here I was, Anana, Queen of Heaven, hiding in my parents' house. As I began to heal, I became a little self-conscious and embarrassed. I began to contemplate for the first time the meaning of my life and what I had created. Deep within my soul, I was feeling such anguish and I wondered if others had felt as I did. It was very strange and new to me. I called my friend Matali daily and we walked and had long talks. Matali was considered the top plasma energy engineering specialist, a physicist who could fix anything. He still occasionally flew onky spacecrafts out of friendship, but he had long ago become disenchanted with the ways of the gods. Matali had married Tara and had gone to live with her people to begin a new life. Terra was the ancient race of the snake people, the Nagas, a race that lived on Terra eons before my family. The snake people came from a different sector of the galaxy, from Altair, to live in the center of Terra. Matali suggested that I come with him and Terra to the snake kingdom. He thought the change would be good for me, and Terra was happy to have me. So. They came for me at my mother's and we flew away. Tara and I had become great friends in the Indus Valley where she had taught my priestesses the arts of dance. Tara was taught the art of sky dancing by the Ap Apsaris, the dancers of heaven. And she was a master. Through intense concentration, she was able to lift her slim body up into the air and perform celestial movements of the utmost elegance and grace. From the tips of her fingers to the softly singing golden bells on her ankles, Tara's dance is an exquisite expression of feeling. I love Tara so. Seeing my forlorn self she wrapped her arms around me and began to weep. Oh, my dear friend, she cried. For a moment, my pride held on to me, but soon I too was weeping. Tara's beauty was not only physical, it came from within her. She possessed a quiet balance of being a gentle wisdom and that which made you want to be with her. No wonder Matali loved her. Matali gazed lovingly at us, crying in each other's arms as our ship climbed into the skies and headed for a time portal. The kingdom of the snake people is vast indeed. There are many cities inside of Terra, each resplendent with towers of white alabaster. The air is fresh regulated by extensive systems powered by energy sources at the poles of terror. There are gardens and crop fields which abundantly provide for the people. The snake people have a variety of body types. Some are human-like, some are half snake or reptilian. They can see in the dark and they can assess a group mind if they desire so with their telepathic abilities. As the days passed in the kingdom of the snake people, I questioned Tara endlessly, entreating her to tell me her secrets. What gave her such integrity and beauty? How could I attain her magical state? Tara told me many things of how her people had come to this planet long ago to build their underground cities and tunnels. She told me there was only one among them who knew everything, and that one was called the wise one, the old serpent woman. I implored Tara to take me to this being. An arrangement was made for Tara, Matali, and I to journey together to the abode of the old serpent woman. Her name is unpronounceable in your present language. It is a sound 
a sound that feels of love. From her shoulders down, she is a woman, but from her shoulders up, she has the head of a serpent. She emanates an energy I had never felt before and have not felt since. She is neither old nor young, and when you try to fix your gaze on something solid in her, she constantly transforms before your eyes. One minute she is exquisite, she is an exquisite beauty, the next a raging demon, and yet one is never afraid in her presence. It is as if she embodies all that is, and that is all right. As I sat before her, she nodded to me, knowing what I desired. She knew who I was and all that I had done. She seemed to know me even beyond my life as Anana. It was as though we had always known each other, as if I had always somehow been on her mind. She looked into me with a familiar wonder and compassion. She showed no desire to control me or manipulate me. Rather, she found joy in my adventures, in my delight, and radiated her unconditional love. Gradually, everything around us turned into golden, pulsating light. Time began to melt, and I felt the dimensions merge. In the eye of my mind, I saw that terror had existed for eons. There had been three spears in this place in the galaxy, and this present terror was the third. At the end of each great cycle, the spear had been destroyed and a new planet created in its place. I saw a vision from the time of the first terror. This time was more gentle and subtle than the one of the Niberian colony. There was great love on the planet, and the beings who existed there devoted themselves to returning to prime creator. I saw a day in that time, oceans of hillsides with great crowds of people all dressed in white, seated along the slope. At the top of a hill stood a white marble pavilion with tall columns, and under the columns in a crescent row were 12 couples, male and female. They began to chant, EOI. EOI over and over these tones flowed out and down the hillside until all was vibrating in the sound. There were a multitude of bright face entities toning the same frequencies. As the energy rose, the beings began to turn into light. At first, light only surrounded their bodies, but soon their bodies were light. Every man, woman, and child on those hills became light as their frequencies continued to pulsating and ascending the sound formed into a spiral. Angels and other higher dimensional, be dimensional beings were drawn into the spiraling light by these building energies. Finally, Prime Creator breathed the spiral into itself as joy radiated throughout the universe. In our state of ecstasy and bliss, we had witnessed a mass ascension of life joyfully returning to its source, Prime Creator. Somehow, Tara, Metali, and I were there in that marvel pavilion, and yet we were still in the presence of the old serpent woman. It was as if the separation of the eons did not exist, as if we were in both times and places simultaneously. Tears of happiness streamed down our faces. In our hearts, we thanked the old serpent woman and took our leave of her. Our bodies were charged with electrical force and it was enough for one day. Back in the realm of the gods, Marduk was plotting the planning. Nurgle had not given up and was creating alliances with the Enlights the enemies of his father Anki. The rivalry of the sons of Anki and the sons of Enlil built up in the atmosphere of terror. From deep in the Serpent Kingdom, we watched as the gods moved ever closer to their destruction. 